Hey everybody, PPC's Matt here, and today I was just going to cover just doing a simple CPU block install, kind of just a quick little tip here, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, guide or walkthrough. So let's get right to it. I've got the most unconventional motherboard here ever to do this demonstration on, but it has, I believe, a 1366 socket, so it works with the block that we have today is the Bits Power Summit EF. Their new, just regular CPU block. It's got like RGB in it. So, we got that, but before we go too far with the block, first off, you obviously want to clean your CPU if your CPU has already been in a system that has a different cooler or block on it, whatever. So, I always just like to use isopropyl and a uh, coffee filter because coffee filters don't have any lint, so cleans up pretty nice. So yeah, if you're wondering, this is like a crazy server board that I could never actually get working. So, first things first with the block. You want to get all, out all of your hardware. Get rid of this stuff. So it comes with quite a bit of stuff, as you can see. And we have a back plate. You definitely need that, especially for this board. It comes with instructions, but let's just see if we can do it without it. So for this motherboard, it comes with three parts to the backplate. You get this sticky pad, is what they call it, I guess, in the manual, which you'll want to remove the sticky stuff, or the, the cover for. And then you will take your thermal pad, or your rubber silicon backplate here, and you'll just want to stick this on there. I believe this is just to make sure that it gets held into the backplate well, and doesn't go anywhere when we put it all back there. Okay, now we've got the back plate all put together, so let's put that on first, which is somewhat of a challenge, as you have to line up the holes and put in screws and hold the board all at the same time, but hopefully uh, you guys will be able to see how I'm doing this, but even for me, especially on camera, it's going to be a challenge, so let's see if we can get these all lined up. There we go, it's pretty close, so once you start to get it lined up, you can get your bolts out, your M3 screws that come with this, and start putting them through, as long as the block's compatible, should all just go in pretty easily. So, we've got all those now, and you're going to want to hold on to them while you tip the board back over because they're going to be a pain in the butt. So, just in preparation for the block, you want to put on your little spacers here as they call them, or they'll be washers, whatever you want. Um, it's just to help protect the board. Especially with this board, there is some stuff pretty close to these posts, so you're definitely going to want to make sure nothing is getting grounded or anything like that. Then after that, you want to screw on the lock nuts. And every block, honestly, has a little bit different mounting mechanism. I know EK's, I believe, is a tad bit easier. It's definitely just easier using something like an X99 platform where, like I said, the screws already, or the threaded bolt holes are already on the socket. So you just kind of work with what you got. And that's what we're doing today. So we got those started. And now we can work on tightening them all the way up. Alright, so we got the bolts all tightened down. So we're ready now to add some thermal paste to the block. So just for comedic effect, I kind of decided to use the EK thermal paste sitting in my shop. So we're just going to put a little glob of that on there. Really that should be plenty and how you guys apply thermal paste is completely up to you. Usually, if I'm actually being serious about the install, I'll like actually spread it around and make sure it's even all the way across it. Some people don't like doing that. It's just, you know, teach their own thermal paste is thermal paste. Your mileage may vary with whatever method you use. So, now that we've got that all done, we just kind of set the block on the posts and guide it down. Kind of squish in the thermal paste a little bit. And after that, you're just going to take your springs here, put one on each 
of the posts. You can take your thumb screws. These are different than the lock nuts on the bottom. And you carefully thread them on. You don't want to strip anything, so take your time. These guys seem particularly difficult right now. Okay, so you're just going to want to get all of them started because you want to tighten them down evenly. So now that you got them all four done, usually what people do is like do a cross pattern. So we'll start by getting this top corner one started. And this ram is really making this difficult. I should just remove it, but oh well. So get it tightened halfway down there. So then we'll go across and do this side. You know, making sure to keep them even. And we'll go up to this corner. You just work your way around the block until it's all tightened up. And there you have it. That's a CPU block install. So a little bit different mounting mechanism, but it's pretty similar to most of them. So I hope you guys appreciate just the, you know, the how-to knowledge of it. Um, pretty basic stuff, but I plan on just giving you guys as much info and tutorials as I can. So let me know what you want to see next. Tomorrow for the stream, we have this little die mixing setup here that I kind of whipped up over the weekend. So we're going to be testing some Mayhem's dies and what colors you can make with that. So definitely hop in PPC's Builders Club tomorrow and watch that stream 12 p.m. Central Time. But beyond that, I hope you all enjoyed this video and have a great day.